I'd stay the heck away from these overpriced Chinese garbage. Welcome back to part two of my review of the KMC grenade wheels, part number KM234. So the last time I was pretty excited about these when I got them. In the part one review, I thought everything was pretty high quality and I was pretty happy. I wanted to get these powder coated to match my build, so I did the centers, desert tan, and the rings in black. And in hindsight, I should have actually ordered the wheels with the black rings and the clear wheels because um, despite contacting wheel pros and several people, you could never actually get a hold of the engineers or the manufacturer of the wheel because these are made in China and believe it or not these were pretty much a bare um, aluminum piece so the the wheels I ordered the beadlock rings were clear the wheels were black um, the beadlock rings had some type of film on them but it was not clear coat paint and it was not clear powder coat so basically we threw these into a chemical strip and that took the stuff right off the clear beadlock rings. So it would have saved us a lot of work. Um, would have saved me money and labor if the wheels had been clear to start with. Because these were black, we did a chemical strip and four of the five it came right off and then one of them we had to sandblast the heck out of it to get the paint off. So. I don't know if they're making these in different plants or what the deal is there because they should have all re responded the same way to the chemical strip. So moving past that, I had to disassemble these 100% to get them powder coated and that meant I had to take these steel inserts out and that's where I ran into huge problems. So with a beadlock, an aluminum beadlock wheel, if you just had threads tapped into the wheel itself and you ran your bolt straight into that. If you ever screwed up your threads and you can't fix those, the wheel's totaled. So to work around that, most manufacturers use some form of steel insert and that actually kills two birds because like this wheel uses 3 8 bolts for the beadlock rings. So if I run a 3 8 bolt into an aluminum 3 8 hole it's going to be a lot weaker than this setup where these inserts, if I remember right, they're about 9 16 So you have essentially a 9 16 bolt going into the aluminum part. And then the steel 3 8 bolt goes into the steel 3 8 thread. So you're basically upsizing the bolt as far as the aluminum thread can see. So you get more strength there. If you ever booger the thread up in the insert on the inside, that 3 8 thread, just take it out and replace it with a new one. So it's a, it's a really good solution, but very poorly implemented on these wheels. So these inserts, they're supposed to be, the way these were built, they were supposed to be red lock tied it in. Over 80% of these, I could just stick my finger in and take them out by hand. So that means if you're driving down the road, the bolt's not going to back out of the insert. The insert's actually going to back out of the wheel. And you'll be driving, and the insert will back out, or inserts, and you'll immediately lose all your air pressure. It's just like a blowout. So you have a blowout, you lose control, crash, die, it's not a good scenario. So if you own a set of aluminum bead locks and they're under warranty, I'd highly suggest you run out, take all your inserts out, make sure they all come out, because if they're seized in, then you could go and warranty your wheels out. Now moving past that, the inserts had red lock tight. If I had to take 400 degrees to my powder coating, then I risk destroying the powder coating that I just spent more money on than I spent for the wheels almost. So. Um, Definitely don't want to use red lock tight. I'm using blue. I'm using medium strength thread locker. That way I can get it out without all the heat and without destroying my powder coating. Last point is another problem, major problem with 
the way these inserts were installed. Some of them were shoved so far down in there that you couldn't get to them. Some of them were sticking up above flush. The beadlock ring has to clamp down against the aluminum rim right here. So if that insert's sticking up, the beadlock actually bottoms out on the insert, and then your beadlock's crooked, and then you either crack your beadlock ring, or you just don't get a seal and your tire doesn't hold air. Either way, it's not good. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, it's a nightmare trying to get any technical support on these because they're made in China. Uh, they're sold by wheel pros. You can't ever talk to anyone that knows anything about them, like an engineer or a tech rep. It's just wheel pros is almost like a monopoly with wheels because they, from what I can tell, control the majority of the wheel market, aftermarket. So, doing my own research, I found this tool on McMaster Car, and this is what's used for these threaded inserts. Um, I think the brand name is Easy Lock, and this is supposed to tighten this insert down until this shoulder here bottoms out on the top of the wheel. But whoever was installing these things just kept on driving them somehow deeper and deeper to the point that these little teeth or jaws on here physically couldn't even reach the inserts because they were so far down. And with that red thread locker on some of these that had actually set up, I had to have full engagement and full strength of this. Otherwise, it was just stripping out the inserts. So extremely, extremely poor quality control on the installation of the inserts in all of these wheels. And these have a one year warranty on them. And when I found out about the inserts, they were actually over half a year old. So the two replacements I got were actually made on a different manufacturing date and they had the exact same problems. So it's an ongoing problem with these KM KMC beadlocks. So just because of this whole insert deal, I mean, these get a one star review from me all across the board. Um, extremely time consuming to get all these out because of the way some of them were seized in there and too deep. If they were all installed correctly, it actually wouldn't take much time at all to take them out. But since some of them were shoved too far down, I had to get creative. I actually had to machine my own tool to go down and grab the inserts and get some of them out. So that's time and money I'm not gonna get back. The other major flaw in some of these wheels is just in the casting. And so I'll show you a little video shot here of one of the wheel casting flaws that I saw after, unfortunately, after they'd gotten powder coated. Otherwise, I would have also warrantied this wheel out. So the next part on the wheel itself, they have two valve stem holes so you can air down quicker when you go to hit the trails. I really like that feature. These holes are a 0 0.46 inch diameter. So um, I'm actually trying two different valve stems and I'm being picky about the colors. Obviously, I spent enough on powder coating. I didn't want flashy chrome valve stems or nickel or zinc plated. So I got these off Amazon. These are um, black coated brass, so they're softer. Um, they're the bolt-in style. Normally, the bolt-in style would be like a zinc plated steel or a chrome steel. Um, the steel's gonna be a lot stronger. We'll see how these last. It makes me nervous because you can't install or remove these without taking the tire off. So the point of running these is if I put my air chuck on here um, and walk away from it, the weight of that air chuck's not gonna torque on this like it would on a rubber one and break that rubber valve stem so that it starts leaking. So these should be stronger for that. Because obviously, if you're airing down and doing it frequently enough to the point where you have to have two valve stems, you're gonna not be wanting to sit there and air a 40 inch tire up 
with your hand holding the air chuck on the valve stem. That would take forever. So I've got a system, I just clamp a chuck over the valve stems and turn it on and I can walk away. And that puts a lot of stress on rubber valve stems and I've had it break them off. On the other hand, I'm also trying some rubber valve stems in some of these wheels. I actually got shorty, stubby ones for an ATV. Um, they're like the shortest that they make. That way they don't stick out and they're not likely to get snagged by a rock. So the perk of the rubber ones is you can actually reach in for sure from this side. If, if your beadlock ring was off and the tire wasn't on this lip, you can, you can snake your hand down in there. And then I get this flexible tool. This is a pretty cool tool. Um, this end threads onto the valve stem. You put this through the hole, you thread this onto the valve stem, and then you pull it out. And since it's flexible, you can actually string this through and then kind of wrap it around and pull it up, thread your valve stem on, pull it out. This also has the tool to take the valve stem core out and then this side threads on for just doing a quick bleed if you don't want to take the core out. Pretty cool tool. They're about 12 bucks. Um, when I was installing one of these, I put a tire on and I forgot to put the valve stems on. And so I did that. I, sn I snaked that through. And so I'm thinking if I'm on the trail and I cut a valve stem, this uh, going with the rubber route, this would save me a lot of time because these bolt-in ones, you're taking the whole freaking tire back off. I'm thinking possibly you could go to like a tire shop and break the bead off the back side and there's a chance that you could snake this all the way through and put your valve stem on back here and install it. So that's the major perk of going with the rubber valve stems. So that covers everything, I think, with the wheel. Holes for the lug nuts are a little bit on the tight side. You do have to get a thin wall socket to put your lug studs on with. Now, center cap, this uh, ring that bolts on, it's got three bolts that bolt it on. It's made out of aluminum also. So I was able to powder coat that, that part's nice. The center cap itself that comes through the center is plastic. So I don't like that because you can't powder coat it to match. Fortunately on my build, I've got lockout hubs on the front. I've got full float rear axles where I want access to my axle flanges. So I'm not gonna be running the center caps. So I can omit that part, but I can still leave this on and it definitely makes the wheel look better. And then we get to the beadlock ring where yet again I'm disappointed. The nice thing is they have KMC opposing at 12 and 6 o'clock and that you can use that to line up with your valve stem holes so you can very quickly locate your valve stems just walking up to a tire look at for the KMC, boom, there's your valve stem. These counterboard holes for your hardware are too small, and that's number one, they're too small in diameter. Number two, they're not on the same pattern, they're not on the same bolt circle diameter is what it's called. They're not on the same diameter as the freaking inserts in the wheel. If you look over here at this wheel, that I've installed. You can see the bolt is offset towards the inside on all of them. It's just so stupid. So what does that mean? It means that the socket that goes over the bolt doesn't fit in the counter bore because it rubs up against this wall. So how do you get past that? Well, I tried seven different sockets before I finally found one that would fit down in this counter bore without stripping my brand new powder coating off. So the fix for it, next time I get hardware, I'm switching to socket head cap screws because then you just use an Allen bit that goes in the center of the bolt 
problem solved. Bad thing is the socket head cap screws fill up with dirt and you got to sit there and clean them all out before you can put your Allen bit in. Otherwise you can risk stripping them out. I don't know. It's just for what these wheels cost, you would think the patterns would match up. I mean, they're the ones making the freaking wheels. They know what their diameter is. So why are these being machined off? Other than that, you can see I've actually changed my hardware out to what they call zinc aluminum coated hardware. It's supposed to be the most corrosion resistant hardware out there and it matches the rest of my build. They'd sent these yellow zinc bolts with the wheels and you know, it's all right, but this stuff wears right off and it rusts sooner than later. So those bolts are the exact same size as these. They're just um, coated with the better stuff. No, those bolts aren't oversized, creating the problem of my socket hitting. They're the same size as these. The wheels are not machined right. They're not made right. As far as assembly goes, I'm in love with how the tires go on and how the wheels assemble. Other than the hardware not fitting, that part really sucks. The reason I have this steel beadlock over here is just so I can kind of give you a comparison. So if you're thinking steel versus aluminum, so this, this wheel has 32 bolts, that one's got 24, and I can tell you I dread the day that I ever have to touch one of these because 32 bolts is so many to go and tighten. It just takes forever. Um, this wheel here, all the bolts sit on top of the beadlock ring. They're not countersunk like those. So these are a lot more susceptible to damage, but you don't have the issue of the socket hitting anything. This, this ring here is what centers the, the tire. There's really nothing that centers it. So on this one, you have this lip and it's got a nice radius and this is what the bead slips over. So this absolutely like centers your tire on the wheel. There's no question about it. On the steel one, you have to just eyeball um, on the main part of the wheel, what the tire sits on is just flat. There's no lip that sticks up like on this one. So you just eyeball the tire on the wheel, try to get it as close to center as possible, and then you put this ring on and while this lip does kind of um, taper and seat down into the tire bead, all this hardware, you know, goes through this beadlock ring and these holes are oversized. It's not like these are dowel holes. These bolts go through this ring and you can still move that ring around. So this wheel, as far as getting it centered, driving high speeds, these ride way smoother because it's truly centered, whereas you're just eyeballing this. So I really like that aspect about those. Weight-wise, this wheel's, um, I think it's roughly 10 pounds heavier. So you can definitely lift one of these with a 40 inch tire by yourself into the bed of a truck, but this steely, it's gonna take two people. I definitely want it to be able to get it into the bed of a truck, especially not a truck on 40s. So the last thing I'm gonna cover, which is one of the parts about having my own YouTube review that I love, is pricing. Because all these websites like Amazon, Summit Racing, they say, oh, don't mention pricing or shipping in your review because we want you to just talk about the product. Well, you know what? Pricing is absolutely a relevant aspect of the product. I'm not buying a new phone right now because they're a thousand bucks. They shouldn't be more than three or four hundred bucks. So yeah, if I was doing a phone review, that's totally relevant. It's affecting my purchasing decision. When it comes to these wheels, these I bought for $240 per wheel, okay? I looked at them uh, a couple weeks ago, they were $475 a piece. How do you double the cost of a wheel? Material doesn't go up that much, all right? Your machining costs aren't really gonna change. It's just gonna be driven by the material cost. 
and then shipping. You know, they come from China, shipping has gone through the roof, but not enough to double the cost of the wheel. So this steel wheel um, actually cost more than this. I bought this for 240 and this guy here was about 260 but now the steel wheel is the cheap version and this is just through the roof and for a chinese wheel um 500 bucks with tax are you freaking kidding me no i'm not going to spend 500 dollars unless it's a forged aluminum wheel like a hutchinson beadlock or something super top of the line the price sucks on these they need to come back down they need to be below 300 bucks or i'm not going to touch them Warranty is subpar because you can't ever get anyone on the phone at Wheel Pros that knows what's going on. They barely know which direction's up. So the warranty's not great, the price sucks, and then when it comes to shipping, they ship one wheel per box, its own box, but then there's two boxes inside of a larger box. So when I sent these out for warranty, they said, okay, you have to ship these um, they gave me two shipping labels, and they said you have to ship each wheel on its own. Don't destroy the original packaging or we will void your warranty, or we're not going to honor your warranty. So this came in its own box. Long story short, I had to go out and buy a freaking box just to ship this back, because they wouldn't let me send it back the way it was sent to me. I thought that was just asinine. I mean, it makes sense they send two wheels to you in one box, but... Just the, the whole warranty thing was a headache. It was a joke. Um, I put so much time into taking all these inserts out and it's like, hey, could you just let me keep the inserts I took out as spares to compensate me for my time on all this? And they're like, absolutely not. You gotta send everything back. So that's the end of my part two review, KMC beadlocks. I'd stay the heck away from these overpriced Chinese garbage. Um, I'm going to run them. I got my life savings into them, so hopefully they last. But uh, if you have some, I'd get socket head cap screws for your beadlock rings and get one of those cool valve stem tools. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, I'm going to do another video about how to install a tire on these, so if you want to watch that, you can check that out. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.